few years ago I went to hunt amber for the very first time. It was hella fun. I did spend at the sea around one week and did catch around 500 grams of Baltic amber of quite small fraction, from 0.1 grams to around 3 grams per piece on average. And in these 500 grams I found my very first amber inclusion. First piece had few small diptera flies in them. Yep, it's my very first amber inclusion and it's very precious for me still. And from that moment I got hooked hard. Hey guys, Yara here and welcome to Amber Steam. And today we are gonna talk about the Amber Collecting and more specifically about the niches of Amber Collecting. So what is the niche in Amber Collecting? Amber can contain hundreds of different types of inclusions, like beetles, arachnids, dipterans, ants, wasps, and so on, and each of these types has hundreds of families and species. Collecting everything at once is hard, because collection is unlikely to get completed probably ever. And that's where comes the niching down in Amber collecting. Let's say you want to collect the hell ants. In this case, you would need only 14 pieces to complete your collection. Why? Because there is only 14 species of the hell ants that are described, at least currently. There could be more in the future. It would be very pricey collection because hell ants can cost from 500 bucks to 4000. And of course, it would be not completed easily because some of the species are extremely rare. But with every acquired piece, you would get closer to completing the collection. In my amber collection, I haven't niched down into anything specific, but most abundant fossil type in my collection is plants. So it's kinda my niche, but not really, because I hunt down single rare pieces of other types. And today I will show you an amazing example of a niched down collection that belongs to my friend Michelle. Michelle collects Neuropteras. Neuropteras are beautiful flying insects that look like butterflies, but with beautiful net-like wings. There's lots of different types of Neuropteras out there. One of the cooler ones are mantis flies, the ones with the cool raptorial claws. Cool stuff! Michelle has lots of different Neuropterans, but he prefers larvas of these creatures, because the buggers look terrifyingly cool and different species has different looking larvas, each of which are predators with oversized mandibles. Neuroptera larvas are not cheap to collect, because they are quite rare and with the rarity comes the pricing. Some of them can cost from $150 to $8000, so that's a hefty price for a single specimen. And there is very good variety of specimens you can collect. There is chunky larvas and there are skinny ones. Probably weirdest one is this one with extra long spider-like legs, but don't get it misidentified as a spider, because it's also a Neuroptera larva, but very rare one. Speaking of variety, there is also variety not only in different species. Some Neuropteras get camouflage from its environment, putting all sorts of foliage on, on its carapace. Others make camouflage out of its victims. And details like these camouflages don't come out in the fossil record with exception of amber specimens. Amber preserves everything inside, every, every detail like hairs on the body or the camouflage of these Neuropteras. There is no other fossilization that can do that besides of the amber. And if it's still not enough to get two of the same species in your collection, look at this predation action scene with Neuroptera larva holding its victim in its jaws. Action scenes like this justifies to have more than one specimen of the same species in the collection, in personal opinion, of course. Thank you. 
and this one is the smallest Neuroptera larva in Michelle's collection, and the smallest I have seen too. And as all small things, this one is kinda cute, and mandibles are not so scary, but don't let it fool you, it hunted other insects and feasted on them. Every single larva looks unique and different from each another, but let's look at the adult specimens from Michelle's collection. And yep, total metamorphosis. Adults looks like beautiful butterflies compared to monster larval stage, and beautiful pictures as well, great job on this. My favorite adult is probably this one. The details and the preservation is magnificent, absolutely love it. These Neuropteras are feeding on plant nectar and pollen, but mantis flies stayed carnivorous after the larval stage. These ones hunt other insects and consume them alive while holding in their craptorial claws, very much like praying mantises does, a case of convergent evolution. If I would have to rate this collection, I would rate it 10 out of 10, because it's one of the best niche collections I have seen yet, and yeah, good job Michelle of hunting every single specimen because it takes not only money, it takes also a patience to find a specific species of a Neuroptella larva and hunt it down. So yeah, good job there. And yeah, this is it for the video. I hope you did enjoy it. Smash that like button and subscribe to the channel for more Ember content. And if you want to start your own Ember collection, check out my Etsy page. Link will be in the description. Thanks for watching and see you next time. Bye.